welcome to another episode of Tech Talk Troubleshooting 101 for a CRT color television. Now this is a, a television that I've actually planted a fault on, but I'm going to show you the, the, the procedure to troubleshoot when you get a fault on a TV like this. The procedure to eliminate how do we know if the picture tube is bad or whether we have a, a problem in the video output circuit. So the symptom on this set is going to be a solid colored screen. In this case, it's a solid red screen. But it could be a solid blue screen, solid green screen. We got a no picture, just a solid color screen with retrace lines. So we know that we've either got a shorted output or we may have a bad CRT. How do we determine the difference between the two? I'll show you. So we're going to do this with a meter. We don't need to uh, we don't need to use a scope on this one. We don't need to use an ESR meter on this one either. You just use a standard volt meter. What we want to do is we want to measure the video outputs. We want to see whether, first of all, whether we have a problem on the board here or whether we have a shorted picture tube. Because a cathode can short to the filament and cause a very similar problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the meter. And we're going to connect our negative probe to ground. So I'm going to get a ground clip here. Again, be sure you're using an isolation transformer for safety. That's my disclaimer. We're going to ground our meter. Now we want to look at the voltages on the back of the CRT here. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be checking the three outputs. We have our cathode red, our G2, or cathode green, G2, cathode red. These are heaters and cathode blue is down here. What we expect to find on a normal TV, we should have about 175, 160 volts on our cathodes. Anywhere between 150 and 170 volts is normal. So there's our cathode blue. That looks good. Here's our cathode green. Looks good. Here's our cathode red. We've got 14 volts. Well, that would certainly explain why we've got a problem. What we don't know is, is our problem caused by a shorted picture tube or is our problem caused by a, a, a fault in the video output? Well, we can certainly put our scope on here and we can, we can look at the, uh, the three signals coming in, our red, green, and blue, coming in from our, uh, our video board. We could do that. Why don't we look at our, our incoming video signals? So let's get our scope going here because we always like to use a scope, right? And let's look for our incoming video signals. TV's on. We can scope the base of the uh, video output transistors. We should see video. Here we go. Here's our video for color bars. Let's crank it up a bit here. Okay, here we go. There's our red signal. So we know our red signal is actually making it to the board. What we don't know is, is it the CRT that's shot? Or is it the video output transistor that's bad? And how we can determine that is that we unplug the CRT. Now we can make our, our signal measurement again, and we can make our voltage measurement. So I turn it on and I scope my cathode green, I've got 178 volts. A cathode red, I've got eight volts. So, nothing changed because if it was the CRT that was bad, that voltage would have gone back up. So now I have to suspect, is it my output transistor? We put the meter in diode test mode, make sure our TV's unplugged, of course. And now we can go about and we can actually measure the video output transistors. So we'll measure, we'll start with the green. I want to make sure this thing doesn't got a charge in it too. I want to get jolted here. We start with the uh, the green. So we'll measure the emitter to base. We get one beep, 0.6 volt, that's good. 
made it a collector. That's good. And then we go the other way around. It should be nothing. It should be open. So that transistor is good. Now let's go to the red transistor. We'll measure collector to base. Okay, 0.5. That looks good. Emitter to base. That also looks good. Emitter to collector. Oh, we have a short. Our red video output transistor has a short. So let's change the red transistor. So let's just remove it. And of course, if we remove the transistor, I would expect that the picture would return with no red at all. So we can remove the transistor first. and power the set up and see whether we have a picture minus the red. So here's the TV running. As you can see, there's no red bar. My uh, screen is probably a little bit too high there. It is. As you can see, there's no red. And that's the same symptom you would have if the, if the red transistor went open. It would have no red. In this case, the transistor here is shorted. So let's uh, put a working transistor back in the set because this was a fault that I, I created by replacing the uh, video output transistor with a shorted transistor, one that was shorted emitter to collector. So I knew what the problem was going in on this set. I'm just, as I say, I'm just creating these real world scenarios to give you an idea. If the picture was blue, if it was all blue, it would be the blue transistor. If it was all green, it could be the green transistor. But there's what it looks like without the red transistor in place. Let's uh, reinstall the original part and restore the set to normal operation. So whenever you change a transistor in the uh, video output, it's always a good idea to adjust your uh, color balance. So uh, we'll do that next. Once we get the set restored to normal operation. As you can see, there's our red back. I adjust the screen control slightly here to bring up the uh, brightness. I got the focus to adjust too, but you can't really adjust the focus on color bars. We need something with a picture on it to do that. So for that, I can actually put a picture from my TV camera that's plugged into this thing. So I just put the camera, poured it on the schematic. Good enough. We can adjust the focus here for the sharpest focus. Okay, good enough. Now we need to adjust the white balance. On the back of the CRT here, there's a little switch right here. And what that switch does is it selects video. a blank screen and a white line. So what we want to do is we want to select the white line mode, which this isn't looking white, this is looking actually quite pink. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the red, green and blue level controls on the back of the tube to make that line white. I know it looks white on camera but 
trust me, it's not, it's pink. First thing I want to do is I want to reduce the I want to reduce the screen control so that the line is not really super bright. Like that. Okay, so now I've got my my tweaker. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna turn the bias controls all the way down for all three colors. I'm going to increase my master screen to the point where there is just no picture. It's completely out. That's where I'm going to start my reference from. And now I'm going to adjust the red, green, and blue so that I get a white line that I can just barely see. So I'll turn the red up slightly until I see a red line. And then I'm going to turn it, do the same with the green. I'm going to turn the green up until I get about this equal amount of green and red and I'm going to turn up the blue bias and add some blue until I make the line appear white. That is looking pretty white. When I flip the control back I should have a, an overall like a dim gray picture and when I put it back into video mode I've now got a relatively normal looking picture now my, this is because there's a lot of white in this picture it's actually looking a little bit green here so there's two more adjustments on the back these are the, what they call the, the drive I've got a blue drive and a green drive the first three I adjusted over here were the bias which sets up the low level the dark portions of the picture on the other side there's the green drive and the blue drive which affect the overall white levels the red is preset so you adjust the red the blue and the green to give an overall good black and white picture and to do this you would normally turn the color control all the way down I'm shooting a white uh, a white card here so and there's how it looks when I'm done I can uh, point that camera. This is just an old, uh, it's an old broadcast type camera that I'm, that I've still got sitting in here. It's been sitting in there, in, it's been sitting on the tripod there since it was given to me. I like it because it's got a color bar generator in it, so I can just flip at the color bars, and I get perfect NTSC bars, and they really they look quite nice. pan the camera around. Uh, it's not uh, by any means level, but there's the set that I'm working on. Yeah, not looking too bad. not looking too bad at all. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let's get some let's get a let's get a TV picture on this thing. See how this thing looks. To give you an idea how strong that modulator is. There's nothing connected to it. I've got the I've got the cable here in my hand. It's now sitting next to the modulator, but I mean I'm I'm a few feet away from the modulator with the uh, the coax, I'm just going to hook it back up to my in-house system. And then we'll find something that's got a picture that I can show you that won't get me written up. I can show you my security cameras. Uh, I probably shouldn't show TV. That's a TV channel, but I can. I can show you that. That's my production. Now we can adjust the uh,
Everything's in the middle here. It's actually looking pretty good. Pretty darn good. Just the focus means so, oops, ever so slightly here. Oh, that was the wrong one. Yeah. That looks good. There you go. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. We haven't seen the last of this TV yet. I'll think of a few more things to do to it. Torture this thing a bit more. But I hope you enjoyed this video troubleshooting the color circuit and biasing the picture tube. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.